What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. Today's premise of the video is very simple. Um, I've noticed a lot of guys have messaged me with issues they've had with ET and they wanted a little bit more DIG help and this right here is basically going to be a complete, I don't say beginner class, but it's going to be more of a instruction based around people who maybe don't use ET a whole lot. Maybe they are using the civilian version and just want to know the ins and outs and how they can do things. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so starting out here, we have a 299D3 that I'm going to use in trainer mode right now. And we'll go ahead and start doing some of the basics here. We'll go to engine side. Most everybody's been through the initial connection and all that, so I shouldn't have to go over that with you guys. All right, so what it's going to do, obviously, is bring up your stat screen here, which is basically all your ECMs, everything right there, where the current software is, and all of that for each individual module. Useful if you need help with finding out if you need to update um, software and what have you. This right here is a great screen. I like to start out in the screen because nine times out of ten, the next gen equipment that's out there, you're always having to update something. All right, so moving on, we're going to go to the status screen, which is right there. You can see that right there, little health icon. And this is going to bring up everything. Most guys know how to get to this point. So you can obviously see, okay, well, engine speed, throttle percentage, all that on the engine. All that. What I like to do here, especially when the machine is cold, hasn't been ran in a while, this is the best thing to do is to look at all your your PIDs, make sure that there nothing stands out. One temperature isn't out of range or, hey, I'm reading rail pressure when the machine's not even running. This is a very common issue that some people kind of overlook. They get in the machine, they go to start it up and do not look at anything parameters wise because this right here can give you a whole lot of information that most people get lost in. So I tell people all the time that if you're having an issue where a machine doesn't get out of cold mode, let's say for a Huey engine or something like that, validate that, okay, what's it reading at this point? If you know ambient temperature outside is 50 degrees and your coolant temperature is at negative 20, well, obviously we have an issue there that needs to be taken care of. But this is a huge thing I like to go ahead and use first thing when I go into troubleshooting of a machine. All right, so what everybody else checks and pretty common, which are right up top here, your active diagnostics, your log diagnostic codes, your active event codes, as well as your logged event codes. Now, I don't really think I need to go into a whole lot of explanation of this. This is pretty much just like anybody who's ever used a code reader before understands. I'm looking at codes, what is active, what is logged. Now, nowadays, I tell people all the time, you may not have the whole story with just your codes. Um, this particular setup on a 299D3 does not have communication status, but obviously on the actual CAT engines and CAT machines, um, diagnostics as far as communication status is a massively huge thing. And also I'd like to do more about the ethernet side of things, but we'll make a video down the road about that. But essentially under the diagnostics drop down, you have your diagnostic codes, log codes, and diagnostic tests and they have events right below that in the more traditional cat engines and newer cat stuff you would actually have system communication status very critical thing there now if you're new to the cat world or you are new to a cat dealership product status reports or psrs nine times out of ten if you're working with a tc or you're working with a cat dealer in general, they're gonna to wanna to see this PSR, and especially cat, they wanna see this PSR. They wanna see what everything that they can possibly see about this machine, what's going on with it, what software is currently on it, what codes are logged. This right here will give the end user a whole lot more information than just the basics. It'll give them what load factor is on the machine, how frequently is it being used, is it getting up to temperature, how many key cycles, so on and so forth. It's a very critical tool. And with tier, tier four final, tier four interim machines, this is a very critical thing because load factor comes into play as well as just the overall, well, how much is the start and stall, stop? How much is the idle time? So on and so forth, very critical items. All right, so moving away from just doing the diagnostics portion of it, because I could sit here for an hour or two and just go over diagnostic tests. We'll go to the information tab, which again, will get you back to your status screen, which we've already been there. ECM summary, which is already what we've seen when we first connected to the machine. Uh, your current totals, 
it's it's sort of useful depending on the machines it's not something I really would critically use or really worry too much about um, but it does kind of give you an overall synopsis of you know how many hours is on the machine how many how much fuel has been used so on and so forth and different machines will have different totals here again I picked a, a fairly new machine everything else in trainer mode is kind of old outdated stuff that I really don't believe is a whole lot of information for you we'll go over the service side and this is where copy config or an ECM replacement would come into play so if you were doing let's say a flash of a machine something goes south well if you do your copy config which would basically save all the ECMs that you can on the machine this gives you the option of okay well I turned this ECM into a blank box and I was doing a flash because, oh, well, the battery uh, battery voltage on the machine decided to go out or my laptop battery decided to die. This gives you an opportunity to go back in here and reload the previous flash file that was in it so that you can save the machine, hopefully save the day and uh, avoid no flash Fridays. Um, going on here, you've got calibrations. We'll bring that screen up real quick. All right, so again, 299D3, so you have a numerous amounts of calibrations you can do in here in this particular ECM. So you have engine cooling fan calibration, inclinometer calibration, the self-level ready-to-dig feature. Not every machine's going to have it, but the more premium machines do have it. And then just the basics here. I mean, I'm not going to go into every detail, and again, every machine's going to vary. Um, in some, some instances, you may actually have to go through and different ECMs will bring up different calibrations. Um, this again, 299D3, pretty basic. Doesn't need a whole lot of calibrations on this machine. All right, so moving up here, you'll see the utilities that we're currently in right now, and that brings up wind flash. Now, if you go over to wind flash, you're gonna go ahead and ask you, as I've mentioned previously, about ECM replacements. You're gonna go ahead and do this. If you don't do this right here, it, it could be a bad day for you, and you're gonna end up having a very long day. So I highly recommend this if you're going to flash a machine as a new tech who works for a cat dealer or even if you are able to flash ECMs on the um, consumer version. I have not really messed around with the consumer version much, but if you have the ability to flash through there, which I'm not 100% sure you can, you want to go and do an ECM replacement file just to keep saved on your laptop so you can obviously bring that back up if something happens. So again, we'll hit yes. And then it'll show you the ECMs that are supported. So on this particular machine, you're only going to get the actual CAT ECM, the engine ECM, and the DEF controller, and the display. Again, not supported. The display is 9 times out of 10. You're flashing with USB anyway on the skid steer. So you would create a file, click that right there, save it to whatever, to your desktop, or if you have an ECM replacement, a uh, file already established, and you already have it saved. So there you go. So you can hit OK. And again, you would go back to the service side right there. And you go back to your copy config. And then you would do your ECM replacement file right there. Bring that back up. But All right, so some things I want to bring up while I'm already on this particular section of the service drop down. We've already been through configurations, copy configurations. Now, like synchronized service hours. So if you were to change an ECM and let's say the hour meter is reading, let's say a thousand hours. Well, if you put on machine control ECM, well, it may be now registering at zero hours. And then you have this off sequencing or off amount of hours between the modules. You want to go ahead and click that and that will synchronize all of the ECMs. As you can see here, machine control is always going to be the master. And, and again, this is a really bad machine to use here, but um, on a lot of the CAT machines and the CAT specific ECMs, as you add a module, it may actually kick it out and the hours will be mismatched. And it's a good idea to go ahead and synchronize it. And you can also set the master hours and what have you, the bottom right there, if you see that. All right, so the next thing I wanna go ahead and bring up is calibration status. So we'll bring that up there. And it'll tell you what's been calibrated, what's not been calibrated, and we'll give you an idea that we go back to the calibrations and we can go and calibrate what needs to be done. And right down at the bottom here, it will also give you the errors, the warnings, and what have you in the description of what's going on. 
So just another kind of a cool thing to look at into, um, especially if you are having an issue with machine, maybe a joystick issue or, or the, the boom or the bucket or what have you is not working correctly, you can go right here and at least to give you an idea of what needs to be calibrated. All right, so now that I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and change machines real quick, and I'm gonna go to a 420E backhoe. Uh, Mr. J. Pater hit me up and had some issues, so I wanna kinda give him some kind of ideas he can go off of. So again, here we are, 420E backhoe. We're gonna go ahead and hit the C44 here. Again, we're going more into a Cat Perkins machine here, so it gives us a better idea and some more options that we can go through to maybe help out as well, also help out old Jay, and also help out with anybody who happened to be watching this video. So again, we bring back up to our screen here with all of our ECMs, serial numbers, as well as part numbers for software groups. Machines got codes, again, we are in trainer mode, so that is to be expected to help out in the training process. So we're gonna go back over to the service side of things, and we'll go over to calibrations. One thing about over here now, as you can tell, now we've got injector trim calibration, which you can go in there and you can enter in if you happen to change injectors or what have you, you can go right in there. It'll bring up all four injectors and you can obviously go one by one, download the injector trim file and update those. All right, so I wanted to go ahead and go back over something I talked about earlier, which was the diagnostic test that you can do for different cat machines. Now this machine again, very limited on what you can and can't do, especially through trainer mode. But again, we've got injector solenoid tests, which again is essentially you can cut, you can test each individual injector solenoid. Um, again, pretty cool little feature here. I like doing this to basically validate and wait to hear the clicks and validate that each individual solenoid is at least reading. Um, also, you can pull the valve cover, create opens, create shorts, and this is a good way to actually check that as well. Okay, so the next thing is cylinder cutout test. I'm sure everybody has done this or at least has heard about it. Again, very similar contents, uh, concept. You're going to be able to go through here, and essentially if all four are running, you have the ability to cut them, cut one out at a time, cut two out, and you can validate, okay, well, let's say I have a smoking condition due to an overfuel. Well, if you can validate which cylinder is possibly having the issue, at least at that point, you know what cylinder to go towards. So it's either an injector or you've got a crack piston, hole in a piston or something like that, or potential issue with a, with a particular hole. So I really love this feature, especially on Huey engines to try to validate if you have a particular hole that might be going bad, um, creating excessive smoking, what have you. I really do love this for that particular issue. Now, the Perkins engines have a lot that I do like and I don't like. One thing I do happen to like is the fuel system verification check, which will basically do kind of a synopsis of the whole system for the most part and go over it and make sure it can hit rail and it's not bleeding rail and that there are no issues to come up with. And you can kind of validate. A, this is like a, a confirmed fix after you've done injectors or a pump or what have you. You run this test here and it'll validate that everything you've done as far as in the high pressure fuel system is good and obviously if it has issues in the low pressure side it may give it a very a low indication or a very indication that there is a problem rail pressure won't reach ideal pressures and what have you so this right here i do love this particular test as well um, it's just a great overall final fix did you fix everything this is kind of a cool thing. That's one thing I do happen to like about a lot of the Perkins engines. And if you do run that test and that thing hits about 30,000 plus PSI rail pressure, it's supposed to sound like it's going to be falling apart. Just to give you a heads up, especially on telehandlers and what have you, 4.4s, four when they hit 32,000 PSI rail pressure, it sounds like it's got a rod knock. So don't freak out if you run that test and it's louder than hell. Customers around you and what have you may freak out. Um, no big deal. That's what it's supposed to do. Okay, so to finish off the backhoe, last thing I want to do is wiggle test. Now, wiggle test, um, it's a cat go-to if you have an electrical issue or you have a problem with a machine where maybe sitting there at idle, it's perfectly fine, and you can back probe wires and what have you, and you cannot find the issue. Now, wiggle test gives you the option to increase the sensitivity on a certain PID, so a certain item or a certain category of items where it'll cat will basically will tell the ECM to essentially be on the lookout for an issue quicker. 
versus the traditional maybe two to five seconds before it'll throw a fault code. You can pick a particular segment of it and really wiggle the hell out of the harness and it will give you an idea if there is a problem. Now it'll give you at the bottom here, you'll have your active codes when it actually does pop. So if you start the test, there we go. If once you start the test and let's say you're pulling on a section of harness, again, this is a horrible one to use here, but if you pull on a section of harness, it will give you an ambient alarm if in turn one of the particular PIDs that you have chosen, have chosen here decides to want to open or short. It will actually give you an ambient alarm and tell you, okay, well, we are on to something here. And that maybe that one section of harness is having problems. Now, note, if you are doing a wiggle test, don't just gently pull on the harness. Cat recommends somewhere between 10 to 20 pounds you're going to put behind it to basically simulate as if that harness is being used. So always remember that. Don't just... Mm -hmm. You want to go ahead and fully put some weight behind it. I've seen guys put body weight onto harnesses to validate a wiggle test, and I highly recommend you do the same. All right, so basically I had mentioned earlier about system communications, and I'm bringing up a 336HEX serial prefix here. Um, we're going to go ahead and go into system communications, and I'll give you guys kind of a brief synopsis of this. Now, it's going to bring up what ECMs are available and the history on it and what have you. Now this is great for the way that J1939 is working now with these machines. All right, so I've mentioned this in previous videos about communication status, but I wanted to kind of briefly go back over it. So obviously in trainer mode, C9 and or the after treatment controller is not giving me any communication status, which either means A, there's no issues, or B, there is an issue communicating with the ECM. So essentially, on the top left here, where my mouse is, there you go, focus. All right, so you'd have your reporting ECM. So the ECMs that maybe are having problems. So let's say it's the engine ECM is not communicating with the after treatment ECM or something to that effect, they'll tell you that. The ECM is having issues, the detected problem, which data link, so one, two, or three, and the diagnostic information. Now, I'm gonna tell you that 90% of the ones I run into anymore are always through data link number three. Um, a good portion of them are with the, whether the knock sensors or the, um, the level quality temperature sensors. Nine times out of 10 from what I run into, it's usually those unless we're speaking of ethernet and ethernet packet issues. Um, but we're not going to cover that in this video, but for the most part, that's kind of what I run into with these. Now, previously, I have made videos about data logs. Again, in the information screen, you can access a data log, whether it be to view a previous one that you've already done or to start a new one. Um, another key thing I like to use would be Snapchat. Snap, snapshot. You can use that to actually bring up a particular fault that the machine may have and it give you exactly the time and what it was in those conditions when it happened. I can't stress this enough, guys, that you could go, I could make this video two, three hours long, but I want to do a real brief video, one brief overview of ET. Now, if this video does well and there's a lot of positive comments, we may go into more of a further troubleshooting video, but I think for the most part, we've at least tackled some of the basics and have went over what I feel um, most people need a beginning starting point with ET. Again... We're going to cut it off there and we'll move to a maybe a, a level two class or a level two training video further down the road if this is something that everybody has a want for. So if again, if you want this video to go further and we do a level two, level three regen after treatment class, leave the comments down below and um, we'll go ahead and leave it there. Do what you guys always do. Like, share, subscribe, pee pump the world. I'll see you guys in the next video.